All right, it uh, is uh, 5 o'clock, October 31st, 2018. We're going to start with our Town of Sangerville Board of Selectmen emergency meeting. Um, we'll for the Pledge of Allegiance, if it's okay with you guys. Or? Um, our meeting is open. Um, is, would you like to start, Jody? Or? No. no. Okay. Um, we're going to. Uh, Discuss uh, an action with uh, Gerald Nesman regarding the Mayo Hospital merger. If you'd like to start. Yep. If, uh, what has occurred since I has, have been here last is uh, the town of Sebek had a select board meeting on Monday evening at 4.15 and we, we spent about three hours discussing the issue that, that has been before this board as well. And at the end of the meeting, uh, the board voted to join the litigation as the town, on behalf of the town, for two very limited purposes. And, and what has come out in this whole discussion is the question, where is the limit of the authority of the hospital board? So, the charter states that the, the, the hospital board's uh, duty, purpose, uh, 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 let me get the, the exact language. So section two of the charter, and it has been amended a couple of times, but the most recent amendment says, so the district shall be governed by a board of directors and it spells out how the times and how it's being set up. And it says the, the board of directors shall constitute the governing body of the district. They shall be responsible for providing in whole or in part physical facilities for hospital system and where necessary or desirable physical facilities for affiliated organizations either within the district or elsewhere. Equipped and staffed to meet needed health care services for the inhabitants of the district and any persons outside the district who may seek or require medical care. So the, the, so this, I mean, it goes on that uh, it shall adopt bylaws to, 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 in accordance with legal requirements. It may provide for an executive committee from its membership, uh, which, which can act on behalf of the board between meetings. Um, I can, if you want, I can read the whole the whole language. But what, what it, it keeps on talking about what how the board is structured. But the purpose of the board is to operate a, a healthcare system. And I, when I read this, this is what the board can do. The board cannot decide to amend the charter. I don't think that's that right is given to the board by by the charter nor can the board decide to give away the assets of the hospital. The only language we have regarding the assets of the hospital is the, the dissolution clause, which is uh, section 11 of the charter and it's stayed the same since uh, 1973. And that is, the district may be dissolved only if all member towns and plantations agree to dissolve to dissolve it by vote at legally constituted town or plantation meetings in said such towns or plantations. And there's additional language, again, this is, this is the, the operative language, the way I see it. So the argument that the town of Sebek is, is trying to make is, is to, to ask the court to rule on two very specific issues. Number one, does the HAD board have the authority to seek an amendment to the charter without getting the first approved by both of the citizens of these member towns. And uh, when you look at the <coughs> civil complex, you have the charter that, that, that is that the articles of incorporation in a regular corporation that govern, they're set by the state, legis state legislature to govern how this, this, this organization or this district functions. The bylaws are below the charter, so the, the board cannot pass or adopt any bylaws that violate the charter. And then below this, the bylaws are policies that the, that the board operates under. 
And then there's a second body of law, which is called the Non-Profit Corporation Act, which is Title 13B in the main device statutes. And it has a number of provisions in there to just basically help nonprofit organizations to operate. And in there, when you look at the amendment of articles of incorporation language, the language says, and I have it in here too, that if amendments to the Articles of Incorporation, this is section 8, 802 sub 1 of Title 13b, amendments to the Articles of Incorporation shall be made in the following manner. And A, if there are members entitled to vote thereon, and that is the issue. Are the, are the owners, the members, entitled to vote on, on these amendments? The board of directors shall adopt a resolution setting forth the proposed amendment and directing that it be submitted to a vote at a meeting of members entitled to vote there. Now, this is the language that would work in, in any corporation. Of course, we have the members of towns who would have to have their own meetings to, to, to vote on this issue, because I don't think selectmen are even authorized to do that. Um, and uh, written notice setting forth the proposed amendment or summary of the changes to be effected thereby shall be given to each member entitled to vote at such meeting within the time and manner provided by this act for the giving of notice of meetings to members. But then again, here we, we wouldn't have a, a big meeting where everybody comes together, but each town would then have to call their own meeting. So the language is sort of has to be adopted. And the proposed amendment shall be adopted upon receiving at least a majority of the votes. Uh, and here says which members present at such meeting were, were, were sending by proxy entitled to cast. So the argument at least is here that a simple majority of the towns would have to vote in favor of a pro proposed amendment of the charter before it can be submitted to the legislature. <clears throat> so this is the argument. Now the counter argument obviously will be, well, you know, are these, if they are members entitled to vote on, are there such members, you know, and, and at that point, at least in my argument, I go back to the enabling legislation, the initial charter, which says, uh, has it in, in, uh, in its adoption clause, let me see if I find that. It contains an adoption clause, and this adoption clause says, uh, okay, now here the legislature passed a law that constitutes HID 4, but it, this is only taking effect and is binding on the communities if the communities vote to accept this. So any community voting in to this charter, you know, it will be bound by the charter and will be exposed to the debt that's associated with this charter. I mean, this is what it's all about, is the, the, the debt allocation. And uh, so the argument here is, well, if all communities had to vote to adopt this charter, all communities really should vote on changing it. And so this is the first legal argument on the charter. The second legal argument, this is a second course of action, again, it's, it's what's called a declaratory judgment request. So it's just, judge, please tell us, you know, how does this play out? The second one uh, is associated with the question of a merger. And again, when you look at our charter the way it is, it doesn't have any provision for a merger. But it has one provision for dissolving the assets, which is they're split among the communities, but only if there is a unanimous vote of the communities to do so. Um, so here the argument is, is, is really along the same lines, only I think stronger, where you say, Judge, if it takes a unanimous vote, a, a, a concurring vote of all towns, because it doesn't have to be unanimous, it just has to be a majority in each of the towns, to dissolve the district, shouldn't it take a similar strong vote to enter into an agreement that uh, will do effectively the same thing, and just in a different way, you know, which is, in, in this case, handed all over to, to another entity. And I, I almost think this is <coughs> even a stronger argument. The language in, the, in, in Title 13b is about the same. It says, you know, if, if the members are entitled to vote thereon, 
then the board shall propose, you know, make a proposal, send it out, wait for the votes to happen, and when the, when the votes come back and they are favorable, then act on it. So that, that is the gist of what the town of Sebec has agreed to pursue here, which is basically, let's get a declaration from a court that tells us whether the board is not outside of its authority by simply signing a merger agreement without having it approved by the towns first. So, and this is the request I'm here with to see if this board would entertain to join. And it's, it's, it's simply that, it's none of the other litigation, it's simply those two questions. Now those two counts would then be associated with a request for a temporary restraining order and a preliminary injunction, which are the legal vehicles to say, okay judge, please, stop the current plan of simply work, voting a merger agreement in with a simple majority vote of the hospital board, but decide first whether this has to go to the communities. And if it has to, well, let the board make its presentation to the communities, and if the communities agree, well, so be it. I mean, that's, so this is the request I'm coming to this board with, and see what the, what the thoughts are. If one of the any questions, please ask. <coughs> For me, personally, this is kind of the crux of the matter. I, I think you could get a lot of people in a room and debate on different ways a merger might be effective or a better way to do it or all these elements that should be considered. But the thing that has always bothered me from the beginning of this is I felt like this process was in the reverse of what it should be. And this, the way you've described this is kind of mirrors the way I felt it should be. I, I, the towns should have an understanding of this process and they should get a say. Uh, and it looks like the way this process, at least the way I'm understanding it, the way they're proceeding now is it kind of, it, no, it, it cuts the town out of it. Um, now that doesn't mean they would be successful. Um, in fact, I, as I'm listening, it almost seems like ultimately this could help the merger. If, if this prevailed, they'd have to start over again in, in a prop, what I would say would be the proper sequence. Educate each of the towns, explain why this has merit. Uh, ultimately, each of the towns would have their own, I, I, I think they probably all have to have a vote. And then the process would progress in, in what I think would be a, you know, a healthier way. Um, and if, you know, if at the end of the day they want to sell everything and each take a check and go home, that is their right to do that. I suspect they wouldn't. They probably wouldn't, you know, negotiate a, the best deal they could. But Who's the that process, that? The, the HAD. The, they, the HAD right now really, for the most part, they have no idea that they're about to give away this asset. I don't I, think most I, people do. Um, okay, go ahead. That's my thought. On the so, Gerald, in what capacity are you here? Are you here as an attorney educating us? Are you here, at, in what capacity are you here? And I didn't know that Gerald was going to be here giving a presentation. Oh, well. Did, did you know Dale? I, yeah, I knew he was going to be here. So, I mean, I don't know why I wasn't told. I, I thought we did have this discussion. No, you did not say that Gerald was going to be here. You said that we were going to discuss a restraining order for our board member. For the collective board, is my understanding. Well, that's... Anyway, but in I, what capacity are you here? Well, I'm here in the capacity of... Well, as, as Gerald Nesman, really, that's what I'm here. I'm not the attorney... Who is, who is prosecuting the suit. And who is prosecuting the Best suit? Best seen in my associate at the office. So I'm here in, in a capacity to get support as a board member, certainly, to, to, to get clarity what, what the rights of this board are. I mean, and this, this has been a process for me, too, to think through this all, right? When in, initially, of course, it's information I asked for, and, you know, a, a judge said, well, um, let's put a hold on this until we decide if I'm entitled to information, which I think I clearly am entitled. 
because I'm a member of the board and the same non-profit corporation acts as I have access to the information and I should receive it within five days of asking. Uh, and that hasn't happened since August. So this was the initial suit. But this is not what I'm here for to say, please join my initial suit where I ask for information. And there's, there's another count in this initial suit that says, if the board, for whatever reason, manages to proceed anyways, at least on behalf of, of the citizens of my town, judge, please set our assets aside if this is done against our will. So if, if, if for whatever reason this would have not gone through, at least I would have staked the claim for the town. This is what I did last week. And now I'm here to ask the town to consider joining into what Sebek already decided to, to, to pursue, and this is to just get a declaratory judgment from the court on those two issues to identify the authority or the limits of the authority of the hospital board when it comes to removing assets or disp disposing of assets of the, of, of the district and as far as it pertains to amending the charter of the district. So, uh, that, so uh, that, that's sort of my, I as a board member, I think this, 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 this is a good idea to pursue. Obviously, I'm a lawyer as well, so, and, and of course I, 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 I input my skill in, into that, but I do not prosecute the case. And, and are you advising us legally to do this? I'm not the town's attorney. No, I'm not here to give legal advice. I'm just asking for um, support. And do you think we are equipped to answer that or to support you as far as being advised legally? I don't understand the question. If I'm not here as a lawyer, is, I guess I cannot ask to answer legally. The question is, do you feel like you are here do you feel that we're armed uh, with, based on only information from you, to make an informed decision tonight and to enter into something? I think that would be something the board would have to decide. I think, I think that's not for me to say. Did your selectmen have legal counsel? No. Other than you? I, I, I'm not the town's attorney. I am. I'm. I have asked for support to get a declaration from the court where the authority of the of the hospital board ends. And and I I, I mean I can ask them questions as well. You need to talk to anybody. Um, I mean, so you did you did not consult with counsel before you entered into the lawsuit. <laughs> Our main objective was to get clarification. We'd like to stop the process long enough so there can be a determination made as to the validity of the board entering into a oh, sort of an end around of what the existing the existing charter only deals with dissolution is my understanding of the hospital district. The hospital district and the hospital. Well, the hospital district and the hospital. And the hospital. Okay. Let's, let's all remember so, that. Well, well no. I, 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 well, okay, I'm sorry. We are members of a hospital district. district. That's correct. And we have an asset that we have all signed on at some point from our predecessors predecessors making a choice that they wanted to support a hospital district and would do so uh, they, they assumed liability for a hospital that was formed and 13 towns or 12 towns entered into that agreement at the time uh, I believe Milo has also come on board in more recent years but 40 some years ago they were kicking and screaming and didn't want right. to. So, so people have willingly gone forward to secure the hospital standing financially. Have we ever been asked to support it? 
financially with tax dollars to this point. No. Legally, we have had full responsibility for the hospital debt. No. What, what legally? Well, if, if 13 towns signed in. And did your and, town, and, I'm sorry, did your town carry that debt on your books? That I don't know because I haven't been a selectman long enough to have been aware of the original origin. I can, I know that our town has never carried the debt on our books. Or the asset. Or the asset. No. Neither. No. Neither. Yeah. And I think the, the main purpose of the hospital district was to provide, again, health care in this area when multiple smaller hospitals could no longer sustain it. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily an unlike situation to what we're hearing is the case now. But at that point in time, those hospitals had nobody to back up and support them financially. The hospital district has taxation ability to support that, which means we've all had a liability. And I don't think, I'm going to make an assumption I don't know to be accurate, but I assume that the town of Sebec never carried it as an asset or as a liability. And one of the things that kind of touched a sore spot on my part was when we opened up a letter that said, oh, we're looking for your support to do this, send letters recommending this is a good process. And by the way, your town has $460,000 of hospital debt you're responsible for. And in conversations with the CEO, I told her I thought that was kind of kind of a big negative saying your hosp your town has debt you're responsible for it and we're going to take it off your hands so you won't have to be responsible for it when in reality the hospital has plenty of resources and assets to cover any debt that they currently have and in the in some short term or long term future there so so I thought that was kind of misleading, bringing up. They had come to us a number of years ago before they started a uh, fairly large project and wanted all the town's financial information. And I assume they probably came to your town as well. And we sure. gave them... Well, they, they came, and it was probably the better part of a year or so before, and they said, we need to know your town's debts, your liabilities, what, what your assets are, because uh, we're going to be going to the main bond bank, and because it's the hospital administrative district, they need to be able to know that your town can support this because you are financially responsible. We gave them the information, and probably six months to a year later, construction had started to get kicking off the ground, and I raised the question of, did you have all the information you needed? Did you need something more? How's that going? Well, we've decided to do a different means of financing. We're going to finance it through a bank, and then we'll consider once the project's done, bonding it or whatever then. Which, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't know how much you're really looking to bond, I guess that's probably a good way. If you've got some reserves, you know you can cover the debt, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So, so we were approached, we were last for our financial information, and it was apparently never needed because they'd never gone to the main bond bank. And apparently, they must have been credit worthy enough for the lending institution that they financed it through to give them the money. But most times, if somebody's got a long term project, the main bond bank is a good way to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, no. But 
but again, knowing that there's a way that the for dissolving the district, I won't. I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with all the language of the charter. It has to be determined by a, a unanimous total vote of the towns. It just raises in the question the ability of board members to vote that away, because if there's a need for change and language of how to deal with this through legislation, then probably the town should be in a position to know what that legislation is going to be. Again, I look at it, there's a lot of citizen-initiated stuff that gets put onto a ballot, and uh, <clears throat> you're reading two or three sentences, and you really don't know what the grand scheme of things is, and that's what people are asked to vote on at election time. Then the legislature looks it over and says, well, we need to make it legal, and we've, we've got to put this provision in, we've got to put that provision in. It seems as though sometimes that's changed things quite a lot from the original mm -hmm. scope of what was proposed. <laughs> I just kind of fear that that's the case here. I, so my long-term goal is to keep health care in the area. I do work at the hospital, you know, so it kind of puts me in an awkward situation. So I do my work at work, and when we have something come up in town, I, I put my selectman's hat on, and, and I do what, what I think is going to be best for the town. We had about 12 people in attendance at special selectmen's meeting that had been arranged for the hospital to come give us information on it. And when the original stop action had been applied, I was told that they would not be attending on the advice of council. So the meeting had been posted, the meeting had been advertised in the paper, and people showed up. So <clears throat> So you didn't get any legal counsel before jumping on a lawsuit. Your town didn't get any legal counsel. No. Well, Our town does not retain legal counsel. No, neither so. do we. I mean, we don't retain legal you counsel. Know, may I speak? Yeah, of course. Don Tom. Marsh Sebeck. Um, <clears throat> you got everybody's covered everything pretty well here, but uh, when it comes to legal counsel, the questions in the lawsuit, it's not like you know, we're trying to put anybody in jail or anything. We just want some clarity of what's going on. And <clears throat> it's been obvious to me ever since I learned of this, I think maybe three months ago, um, four months ago, I don't know, uh, talking to people in town, not only Sebec but Dover, very few people have heard anything about it, about a possible merger. And I think you kind of, highlighted on that a little bit because very few people know anything about it. Well, I will say that, I mean, as far as our town is concerned, we have been informed about that. I mean, the so letter did, that Rick wrote mm -hmm. to our town's it's people, it's been on the website, on the website. it was in the town report. Right, so it, it, it obviously your board report, member didn't, yeah. didn't disclose no, I think that they were talking the, about a merger. I no. think the citizens know that this discussion has been happening. Right. But I don't think they have any appreciation for what the HAD is, and 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 what our role in that is, and and I, I bet most people don't know that we actually own the hospital. I didn't know it, even though you're right. We our our board member had informed us that the hospital was in talks in a merger talks with Eastern Maine, and I think I think all of us kind of felt like that made sense. But at that point, I had no idea that we actually owned the hospital. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, unless you, you know. Right, so, and that's kind of my point. And I feel like that's kind of the thrust of this, is that this may not be successful. But if it is, everyone's going to know that. Everyone will, every community will then be forced to have that discussion. I think they should have. Uh, because we haven't had it. Right, and so the question is... 
why couldn't we ask instead of suing the hospital? Because they were about to enter into this agreement last Wednesday. They were going to sign. And you don't think that they're qualified to no. you don't think they're qualified to sign it? Well, that's you don't a think different they're qualified question. to sign it. That's a different question. Do I think they have the right to sign it, or do I think they're qualified to sign it? I said, do you think they are qualified to sign it? That's, I would say, is irrelevant. I'm not sure that they are. I mean, uh, that, That's I the question. Uh, are they qualified to sign it? I would have it? no way of knowing that. This is, a, this is a merger of a multi-million dollar entity with a billion dollar entity. It doesn't <laughs> appear to me that they have the skill set that would necessarily, do but you, they may. Do you, did you ask whether they got counsel with regard to, I mean, do we have the skill set to make those? No, but do you, do you not think that they got Well, actually, in our meeting on the counsel? 22nd, it was clear that they hadn't had any professional. Well, they had. Well, they, we were told otherwise. And uh, uh, very, very early on in the merger, this, this firm was, was whatever you call it, retained. They do mergers and acquisition. acquisitions. Can I, can I speak to that? Yes. It was my, on my urgence that this gentleman and Rick's was, as well. was retained. Yes. He was not called back after the first meeting. There was an upsetness in the institution because I said, if we as the board, first of all, we should be represented independently of anybody else in the organization. The board might have a different interest than administration. So we should retain somebody to advise us in the merger process, which was this gentleman was called in and there was discontent because I said the contract should be signed between the board and this gentleman. So it's entirely clear to everybody who he represents, whose interest he represents. He came once, he actually made a good presentation, I mean, part of it was a canned presentation, but he made, made very good statements, and one of it was, do not underestimate how much you can ask for in this, these situations. You know, put your asks on the table. Well, we end up with an agreement that is just handed over, and if you change your mind down the road, we have the right to sue you for it. So, and by the way, you, you, you are somehow going to commit to control your elected officials on this board to, to, to dance to our tune. I mean, it's, I don't, you know, how, how do we end up with something like that? Because we don't have mm. independent representation. Because this gentleman was immediately sort of blocked from coming back. He's coming back. Well, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's very entertaining to me. I mean, I'm you know, glad no, you're entertained. No, knowing, knowing the background here, right? Because this is this he should be have been involved all along. Because it, it, it makes sense for a board to be informed and independently consulted on, on, on a question of a merger. And maybe if that were the case, the question of the authority of the board would have come up earlier, but, but it, it, it didn't, the gentleman was not asked back. I mean, I, I tried once or twice. Um, the, the board itself has done very little investigation, I mean, it has listened to presentation and all that, I understand that, hours and hours and hours. But there was not independent investigation into the critical questions. And, 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 and it simply did not take place. I mean, I, I twice urged letters identify what quote unquote asks we have. I mean, so what, what, what do we want out of this? You know, if we then end up with a, we have no promises, not even to keep it open, uh, but give us everything in the end, you know, I, I think the board failed. That's your opinion. The, 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 this is my opinion, yes. So my question is, is if he's coming now, Who's hired him? Has the board hired him? Has the hospital hired him? Um, no, at, at, at the... No, I, I, I don't know. I do not know. So 
to my knowledge, the board hasn't even discussed, or, or even an executive committee of the board has met to discuss the lawsuit I filed. You know, I, I have asked all along to be informed of any meeting of three or more board members, and I've not been informed of any such meeting having taken place. Again, this is a public entity. You know, they have to post a meeting just like this board does or the select board does. So I, 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 I do not know, um, you know, how, how uh, I think Jim is his name all of a sudden is back in the picture. He certainly wasn't talked about at all since his first meeting here. Well, he may, is he possibly being brought in in, in response to this lawsuit? Um, I, I can't, I can't answer that. I don't know. But uh, we were all here on the 22nd and it was clear that at least for the bulk of this process, uh, and we had two representatives that had saw the whole thing completely different in terms of where, where the desired outcome was, but they both agreed that neither one knew who was really negotiating this. They weren't involved in it. They both agreed on that. Right. I mean, do you not think, I mean, I, I, I well, I mean, whatever. I mean, I'm not, I, I can't. I mean, that's important. I would, if, if, if right. we but as I, a board I think did the that. attorneys, the attorneys are, you know, the Nelson and Doyle, and whatever the attorneys for Eastern Maine are, are brokering or whatever. And I mean, I'm saying that, I don't know that. Uh, I do know that the board's not sitting and bro brokering the deal. Well, no, exactly, but the but, board represents uh, how, the owners. And how, how come the owners aren't talking? That's... But how do owners talk, uh, how, I mean, unless you are speaking, unless you speak the language, uh, you know, I think I do. Well, you do. You're an attorney. Well, no, I also have extensive business background and education. I was in the banking world. Um, I have formal education in health sector management. And I, I have the background and I think I understand a lot. But there, there was no... There was no committee even formed. I mean, there was a, there was a working group formed to be an interface during the the, the due diligence process, but there was never a, a, a negotiation team, or there was never even the discussion of you know what are we looking for in this. You know, I I've always pushed for more than one. But this, but this is just my my view, right? This is the board will decide. But I pushed for pursuing more than one option. This was written into the initial agreement. I, I made a motion to amend it, the initial interim agreement. Uh, the minute I was voted off board leadership, within a month or two, the second interim agreement was presented, had all this language removed. So we were down to just, we're just going down the merger chute, but there was no, I mean, there, there was really no language in there that said, well, we had, we had established our claim as to what we want out of this, and now we are <laughs> faced with a with a with a with a, with a merger agreement that that completely. I mean, that, that, I, I don't even know who represented us. I really, honestly, don't know who represented our interest in this in this process because it plays us at the wall. I mean, it it just. It, well, that, that's your opinion. Um, well, yes, it's my it's opinion. Your opinion. Okay, is your no, opinion, if you don't want me to talk, if, well, you know. I, I, I didn't know you were going to be here, so I mean, you're, you're just, I mean, I didn't realize you were giving a presentation. I had no idea, so I'm totally blindsided. So, um, you know, um, I'm. I mean, what are you trying to tell us? What do you, what do you want us to do? No, I asked for the support. Do you See, think they have the authority to do to do this? You asked me, the do I think they no, have the know-how or the no, expertise? No, no. I do you said, think they have I the said, do you think they are qualified? Right, you asked me that. Now, I'm <laughs> saying in response to that, do you think they have the authority? Yes. Okay. Now that's, is, is that fair to say that's kind of the essence of what you're... 
that's the essence of my request. Right. To, to ask the court to determine whether the board actually has the authority to do what it is undertaking. It, it, that might, unquestionably has the authority to manage the pass a, pass a budget, you know, open a clinic, close a clinic, buy and sell an ambulance. <coughs> this is all the ongoing operation, but does it have the authority to make this? I mean, it certainly has the authority to develop a plan to then present it, and then once it's approved, to execute. But I think it's this approval process that the owners control. That, and so I, is that, would you, that's kind of the essence of the question. You asked what was he looking for? That's the essence of the question. And it's, I guess, reasonable people could disagree as to whether they have the authority or not. I suspect that many of the current board members of HAD believe they have that authority. They may, they may not. So the question is, do we want to challenge that authority? Is that a fair way to summarize this to, request? To, to get a determination, yes. Yeah. Yeah. To who, verify it. Who, 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 but in this merger agreement, there's a clause, and I don't know if the, the board yet has received it. Uh, in this merger agreement, there's a clause that says, HAD for warrants to EMHS that it has the authority to execute this agreement. Warrants, what does that mean? Well, it's a covenant. You, you basically say, I promise that I have the right. So that's that's how I would that, say this is not legal that, advice, just to be clear. Repeat here, that again, please. There are covenants in this agreement, right? And if we had it on the table, we could all look at it. You didn't bring it. I, it's up to your representative to show it to you. Um, you're re you're here representing you're representing you you're here you're you're doing exactly that. I'm, I'm not representing the town of Sangerville on this board, and it, so that the just general covenants there in all of these agreements, right? When the corporation will always give a covenant, say I, I warrant to you other side that I have. The authority to do what we're about to do, because otherwise, why are we signing here, right? But this this is part of the agreement, right? And so, if the, the, the question is, does the board have the authority, the hospital board? So here's the question: They yeah. have legal counsel. D the, uh, Joe Schmo sitting on the board, or yeah. I mean, uh, our representatives that yeah. sit on the board come from all different walks of life. Absolutely. We don't sit here thinking that they understand legal or they understand medical. We know that they're going to make a nice, sound decision based on being informed from, from and being educated. So, yeah. so, they have had legal counsel all the way through and I, I would say that they have the authority to Go ahead and make an informed vote. No, I, I I agree. You have every right to your opinion, and I suspect, like I said, that the majority of the board members believe they have this authority. They may, but they may not. If if we support this action along with Sebek, and the judge says you don't have any merit, they have all the authority they need to do this. Guess what? They can proceed. No, well, not only that, they have a ruling on it, too. Yeah, no, they'll advance this like that. But if, on the other hand, Gerald's action prevails, they're going to be forced to rewind and do this in a different way, which might actually be the correct way. That might not be, but that's really all this is about. I don't think, for example, just my opinion, I don't believe they have the authority to hide that contract and, ha and, and make my representative vote on it. I think, even though they have an attorney, I think my town has a right to read that. Now, I could be wrong. I don't want to dedicate money to an attorney to fight that right now. So doesn't mean I wouldn't suggest it, and we could talk about it. But their, their attorney, the hospital attorney, is telling them to keep those documents secret, even though they're voting on them. I don't think that's right. That's, I'm using that as an example. So, But, it, I mean, Joe could have brought it and shared it with you. I that's mean, not my point. The and, point is the position of the hospital. And he's been in conversation hospital. with Gerald uh, nonstop. And well, Gerald hasn't shared that, that, that 
that agreement with you? Has he not? Sh has he shared that agreement with you? The position of the hospital Pastor. is that it's a secret. I don't. I use that as an example of. I, I just disagree with them. I don't think that's correct. But they could be right. Well, that's a question I specifically asked the attorney at the hospital at the last board meeting. I said, I understand it's your. But I'm paraphrasing. I don't know. I don't know. You know, remote it. But I understand it's your position that this is a non-public document, even though it was discussed in the public session. And he says it will be a public document once it is signed. And I said, what is your specific legal authority for this assertion? And I got no answer. So I think if the attorney cannot articulate so, such a simple question, really, um, or an answer to such a simple question, you no. Know, um, I, I, I'd like a determination as to the, the limit of the authority of this board, and this, I mean, this is why I'm here, and this, I mean, it, it's as simple as that. Yeah, will, will, it, will it delay this for a little while? Yes, but if it comes out that the court says the authority is here, well, the board of the hospital district will have the benefit of knowing, because there will be a ruling, and the ruling, if not appealed, is final. So then there's no future question on, on the authority of the board. I mean, that's probably a side effect they're not really excited about, as I think, by the time this is filed. Uh, but, but that will be one of the side effects, too. There will be finality one way or the other, once this litigation has run its course. How long do you think the litigation will take? It all depends. On what? On, on the court, on the appeals. You don't know. I mean, it depends on which side it comes out on and which side appeals. But as far as this aspect of the litigation goes, now the first claim where I want my information, there's, yeah, there's a, this is not what I'm asking for. There's an entitlement to legal fees in the law. I'm not asking anybody for fees. And for this other part of it, you know, my office is doing this Pro bono. It doesn't. We don't ask anybody for any fees for this. This is not a, 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 an exercise in personal enrichment. I have no no interest personally at all in the outcome, whether there's a merger or not. I don't benefit one way or the other. Well, and as I said in a letter I sent to the town in, in, in this year's town report, well, I lose my ten dollar a meeting stipend. I mean, what about if when Sebek gets her two million dollars? What do I get out of that? I don't know. I'm asking no, you. I'm for and what, I'm about, what about your, I, I, what about your, the person who filed the uh, claim? No, no. She works in my office. We, we, we're not, we're You're not, are you partners? Yeah, she works in my office. You're partners? We are, she, she's a, an employee, quote unquote, you know, in my office, but... Um, is, is she a partner? She, or she's your employee? She works there on, on the basis of what she, she earns for the office. So, and, and she has agreed to do this because that's, that, that's a, once in a while you just do the right thing. And that's what I deem to be the right thing in this case. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not one of these persons who I need to be paid for every, every, every finger I move. No, no. Neither are the doctors that are in the hospital yeah. trying, trying to but the, but the, work today. Yeah. And tomorrow, and the next day, yeah. and all through the night. Yeah, and all and, and all and, of this has no impact on oh. anybody. No, not at all, because the hospital is financially extremely sound. There's no impact at all. Emotional in impact. Well, I, I would disagree with you 100 percent. Well, that, that that's and maybe I, and so. And that's based on 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 a lot of angst and anxiety yeah. within the staff. Of, of insecurity and and I'm, I, you can do what you want but hey there's a free world well, you can sue the well, hospital well, and but but there are people taking care of other people's lives and holding people's hands that they they can't they're they're insecure and the the chief of the medical staff is calling a board member and saying 
you know, can you give us some, can you give us some, some you know, some emotional support? Because I, I'm, I'm trying to hold everybody together here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a big picture. It's a big, and, and I'm not saying you don't know it's a big picture. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we all need to know what that hospital is doing yeah. every minute of every single day, delivering free health care. Yeah. Seven million dollars worth of free health care this I know, year. I know that. I'm, I know. You know it, all the numbers. Yeah. And as far as... And I have no intention to destroy the hospital at all. I'm, but, I'm, but what about the emotional stability of the hospital? Well, wouldn't that be... I mean, when, when we really get down to it, would that be and always along have been the duty of management? Of course. Absolutely. Manage. So they're and, working on it well, right well, now. Well, but if... They're working if, overtime on if, it right if, now. If management has managed itself into such a position where, where, I mean, where, where it's, it, it tried to push something through at the speed that makes no sense when 13 towns are involved who own this. And when then the emergency brake is taken and it finds itself in that position. Well, who is there to blame? Now, maybe the calculation was nobody will pull it. You know, then it goes through and the vote would have been done. And, and uh, you know, this, this contract is so, I mean, so one-sided against Mayo's interest. I, 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 that, I disagree with that. that and, and, and there is... Well, if you would let me finish, um, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm sorry. If the legislation that is anticipated to change in the Charter were to pass, and let's say that change, and, and, and this is what at, at Monday's meeting, uh, when, when Kelly was there, the, the, the assistant to the CEO, she said, the, <clears throat> it, apparently, I haven't seen it, but apparently it intends to move, remove the decision from the towns to the board to, to create this final merger vehicle or to, to commit the assets to this final, mer final merger vehicle. If in eight months down the road, if this legislation is changed, right, and eight months down the road there's a different board that says, no, we're not, we, we just don't want to do this, Eastern Maine would have a claim to damages and to specific performance and could basically seize the assets. Now, who negotiates a contract like that? So, and who then presents this contract without even showing the board members the proposed legislation at the time they're asked to vote on such a monumental contract? I mean, so yes, the emergency break has been taken, pulled, but I think the first thing that I would hope management would do, and I mean, I, I don't know what it is doing exactly, but what I hope it would do is say, this, you know, nobody's job is in danger here. This is something that will be sorted out. And it will be sorted out, you know, it will take a month, a year, I don't know what it will take. Depends on the judge. But it will be sorted out and there will be finality. And Eastern Maine Medical Center will be, or Eastern Maine Health System will be around in a year just the same. There's no, we are not against any emergency decision point here. So why there is panic? You know? Because, uh, well, okay, because it didn't go the way some, no, some wanted no. it to, but maybe those didn't have the right to make the decision in the first place. So there we are. I mean, we, that's what we got courts for, to protect the interests of people. So then we can disagree. I'm sure we can all disagree on this, but you know, now a judge is looking at it and is going to make a decision. You know, and, and, and just to, to clarify this, I never, I, I never took the position of, oh, I, I, you know, I dislike Eastern Maine Health Services as a partner. My position is make a meaningful deal. You know, negotiate something that protects the interest of the community. Right now, this deal doesn't protect anything. Well, that's what you. That's, no, it's a hope. That's, it's a hope. That's, it's a hope that the organization that is financially challenged, let's say that, will carry this through. When we have the opportunity to say, 
we will, you know, I mean, whatever outcome, but we can protect ourselves and still have them run the hospital where they would not be any worse off. They might even be better off when you look at it economically. So why are we pursuing blindly a deal like that where everything else gets moved out of the way? And for this whole last year, we did not have any discussions on the board that I can recall how we're going to structure this deal. Yeah, we had, we had you know, oh well, you know, this is, this is how the new governance will be, or this is how uh, the staff gets managed, this is how billing is done, this is how patients get transported between facilities. I mean, there, there were a lot of presentations along these lines, but there was no substantive discussion. And were you at every single meeting? At every, well, at the board meetings, I think I must have missed one or two in the last year. You know, these, these presentations from Easter Minute, oh, that's all they were, they were PowerPoint presentations. And I, I want to say I, wanna, I wasn't at more than two-thirds of those. I mean, I, I cannot tell you exactly, but I, I think the record will show. I don't know if it was attendance taken at those, but I, you know, I, I tried to go and ask questions, and I, and I listen, and you know, I make my judgment, and other folks make their own judgment. It's not this... I, I don't come from the corner of, oh, I'm stubborn, I got to, you know, before, before I even considered filing this first lawsuit, I went to see you folks, um, those, you know, those three selectmen from Zurich, I, I went to see them, I said, no, this is where we're at, and I've been asking for information, I haven't been getting it, but why don't I get answer to information for two months? Um, what, what, what is that? So it's calculated, we'll just going to get it over the finish line, and we'll pay a little fine later? But You're done? I have a question. Yeah. You went to your selectmen. Yeah, and I they said, didn't elect you. I mean, they were three people that probably elected yeah. you. But your town elected you. So why didn't you go to your town and have and ask your town well, I, I what, went, whether you could sue the hospital? I, I went to the representatives of the, of the town who, who, who managed the affairs between town meetings. Okay, and, so bingo. Yeah. That's what the hospital does. They didn't, they didn't go to every single town member, well, they, they went to the representatives who were elected to sit on that board and that make those decisions. Yeah. So bingo. Bingo what? Bingo. Yeah, I mean, okay, bingo. yeah, it, it, you didn't, you asked them, they did, you're, an elected, well, I, you're an elected official from Sebec. I'm them, talking what, now. What did I you're an elected them? official from Sebec, correct? So why didn't you ask your town whether you could enter a lawsuit? I did. I asked select the well, I and I said I wouldn't do it if any of them would disagree. What about all the other people in Quebec? What about what I, about what I, about I'm them? I'm sorry, I mean you're, I'm, you're I'm, elected. You're okay. I'm busy off base here, but I think he filed it as an individual. He didn't file it on behalf of the town. I we, found we, as a board member. We talked this about the like, elected board member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about it after, you know, at the meeting on Monday about yeah. jumping on, and, and that, that's where that was. I mean, that was. You didn't need to talk to the town. I don't think if you were. Well, I wouldn't have without talking to you folks. I know you no. said that. Yeah. I know, but you didn't have to because you did it as an individual. I did it as a board. I, I, I filed as a board member representing the interest of the town to try to protect the interest. Yeah. Not as an individual. Not as I'm an sorry. individual. Yeah. As, 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 as a board member. Yeah. Yeah. Capacity so done. Th that's the important thing here is to know. I mean, and again, as a lay person. Entering into a lawsuit without having gotten legal counsel of your own, I, I, I'm frightened for you. I, again, you know, I, I am, I, I, I'm sorry. I understand your concern, Jody. Um, my, my thought on that is <clears throat> the information had to be obtained, I believe, and I think... I think most people who have heard what's been going on for the last week or two realize that we need to know, we need the information that backs this, this deal. Because we, we do, we're like stockholders of a company. That's the way I look at it. There are, there are, there are say, 13 stockholders and, and all the sub-stockholders within each town. We all own a piece of that hospital. But it looks like the directors are actually trying to sell it without asking us. 
Now, you know, it's just not right. You know, it's almost like theft without authorized taking. Huh? I mean, really, they haven't been authorized to sell something that belongs to someone else. Each board member was elected by yeah. the town. That gives them authorization to sit on that board. Yep. And they represent the town. Right. And so... They do, Jody, but I think what we're talking about also is the charter. Who makes the decision on matters like this? A merger. Giving away $28 million worth of assets without any guarantee that Eastern Maine is going to keep our hospital open for the next 20 years. We are a rural community, the way I look at it. I'm, getting no, I'm not getting any younger every day, I'll tell you that. And having a local hospital, even maybe they can't perform all of the specialty uh, uh, operations and that sort of thing, but we can get a lot of the things that we need to get done as we get older. It's harder to drive to Bangor. No question. Absolutely no question. So, and, and, and I'm not saying that, that, that Mayo's going to disappear. I'm just saying that why don't, you know, he, we have no guarantee of that. Right. And, and I we mean, do and, also, and, and, I'll, and I, then I'll stop, uh, we also know that they're not in the best of shape financially. Correct? I, I, I can't answer. I mean, I, I've been told that. Yeah. And that, that, okay. And, and, yeah. and that's all and I I, I mean, I don't think any hospital is, you know, I is, agree. I agree. You know, but you know, because I'm, you know what? Healthcare isn't, isn't about dollars. Yep. It is. It isn't about dollars. Oh, it isn't. Uh, okay. It is not. You've got to have dollars to make it happen. You betcha. So. But you know what? Not a one of those people is doing a quote unquote wallet biopsy when when you walk through that door with your heart attack within that first hour, that golden hour, that you you're not gonna make it to, to Bangor. That's right. For your TV. That's right. So so and and this is ju this is just you know, I have a close friend whose mom was in her dying days. She happened to have a uh, her her healthcare provider was in the Eastern Maine, but up here at Northwoods, because Northwoods is in Eastern Maine, here, right here in Sangerville. And her mom, I, I kept I kept thinking, why is her mom having to go to Greenville? She lives in Dover, to Greenville just to be hydrated. She was dying, just to be hydrated, and that's because Eastern Maine owns Greenville, and and she couldn't come to Dover. And how sad is that? Terrible. We need a con continuum or whatever the, you know, whatever the word. I, I just made that up. But it, those are more human aspects of what we're talking about. You know, the money part, the money part, you know, all the businessmen can talk about the money part. Well, and what, I, what, what, what stop East of Maine to send a person to Dover if that's no. a better thing to do? Well, there's, nothing, there's nothing that stops them. I mean, it, it, it's, it's like if somebody comes to me and I say, well, this is not my expertise, I'm not going to. You know, I can help you the best. I'm not gonna say you have to stay here. Well, you go. What's best for you? So. Well, because she was staying with her doctor. Her doctor was caring for her, and therefore she was hot, getting hydrated in Greenville. Yeah, well. Okay. And her family had to go to Greenville every day. Yeah, so, but. So that, I mean, you know, we can go on and on and on. And on. It, it seems like, and I actually kind of felt this way since we had our first meeting on the 17th, that there's this perception that if you don't support this merger in its current form, that you don't support the hospital. And I, I for me personally, I would argue the opposite. I, the, my reluctance to jump on board with this deal, such as it is, which essentially... I know I, I get the sense that you bristle at giving away, yeah, but the reason, you, the reason that that, that term is used is because we literally are are relinquishing all assets, cash, everything, in exchange for no conditions, no contractual agreement at all. We, you I know that for a fact. That's what that's what my representative told that's me. That's a fact. That's, yeah, that's what, what my representative told me. Okay. So my concern is. Yeah, I agree with that. My my concern is 
as, as, as well-intentioned as this proposed merger may be, it may actually put healthcare in greater jeopardy. I think stepping back, being more thorough, more pragmatic, more transparent, might actually have a better shot at securing health care. The fact of the matter is, Eastern Maine is in financial difficulty. We know that. And I agree, it's about compassion, but it is about dollars. At the end of the day, their accountants in Brewer are going to make decisions that affect people. That's the reality of it. And if we don't, if we don't, if we're not honest with ourselves about that when we go into this deal, we're, we're just kidding ourselves. So it's entirely possible that citizens could oppose every aspect of this and still feel just as strongly about that hospital up there as you do. Maybe more so. My biggest thing about this, because obviously the hospital realm is not nothing for me to talk about. I don't know anything about it. I mean, but when I look at this, I see this as two completely opposite organizations. You have a local hospital with local control that does have local tax base that can help if need be. They've never needed it, but it's there. It can never go bankrupt the way it is. Correct. It can never close unless we all decide we're going to close it. But I mean, financially, none of us want that burden tax-wise, but that is there as an option. Once we do this merger, and this had four is dissolved, and we are owned by Eastern it, Maine. It's not going to be dissolved, because if you dissolve it, then all the assets, the hospital needs to be sold. They're going to amend the charge. Everything's so sold. Well, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. This, this is a misconception, too, because if the, towns, yeah, if, okay. if the towns vote to dissolve, the board then has the authority to dispose of the assets in the manner it sees fit. So the board can certainly call one of the other providers, be East and Maine, be Waterville, be at St. Joe's, and say, hey, you want this joint for a dollar? But it, isn't would close, that what... it would continue to operate, but it would just it would just remove the towns from the liability, and, and then the reserve funds get distributed among the towns. So it, it's not this scenario that the dissolution Results in the closing of the operation is, is, is not accurate at all, and I don't know where it comes from, but you know, this is a long, a series of, of, of statements that, are, that, that almost seem designed to, to, to intimidate people into a certain course of action. It's not true at all. Well, I think what it is is you have two. Well, you or I could buy it, Joe. We, we could put the dollar on the table and you know, take on the responsibility and. But if we read the charter as of today, yeah. when I say dissolve, yeah. today that means the complete dissolution of the district. Sale of the district. Of the but district. The, the sale itself is decided by the board. And if the board decides, in the big picture, it's better to sell this for a dollar, the board could sell it for a dollar in a dissolution scenario, keep it operating, find somebody who wants to take it on. And, 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 and do it that way, essentially give it away, right? But the board would not be able to give away the reserve funds in a dissolution scenario. So this is why the merger scenario was developed, which would allow the giving away of the reserve funds as well. But at the end of the day, when this is done, when this merger, yeah. we are not going to have radical control. No, no. If, All if of our the assets goes, are going to be owned by an actual corporation. We'll it's be, not going to be locally owned. No, the, the, the merch idea is that you, you create the special merch vehicle, you, a, 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 a non-profit corporation, right? Get a tax exempt status, contribute the assets, had for will contribute these assets into this vehicle, and then the, 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 the sole member of this organization will be Eastern Maine Health Services. So this is this is the, the, the legal transfer that's, that's, that's uh, contemplated. So what this merger does, yes, it dissolves the district de facto because the district will have no assets. So I guess the board could still meet, but it obviously cannot fulfill its duty of providing health care in the community. So I, don't, I, I think it's, it's semantics, but it's the same result in the end. You know, whether, whether the merger happens 
or the solution vote. Now, the, the solution vote, the ability to give away the reserve funds does not exist, and that's the only difference. Because you could, you could get the same route for a one dollar bill to give this hospital away to Eastern Maine Health Services, but the reserve funds would stay in the communities. And that would be my concern with the whole thing. But because the, Doc was here, he's been telling us now for over a year as far as the ambulance service and how it's losing money. We know the ambulance service is that money loss scenario with us. <laughs> Well, it's the ambulance and, and the reimbursement. I mean, I can only speak from my own experience, but this is what I see are the recurring themes, right? We, we can work harder, serve twice the patients, we get less per patients out of Medicare and Medicaid because cost-based reimbursed. We, we get fewer patients, we get more per patient. But the point is, the idea behind it is, this is a, a system that will keep a hospital alive. Now, if it wouldn't pay at 85 percent, but 100 percent, we wouldn't we wouldn't even be talking because the hospital would be operating. It would make a little money on the commercial side, and maybe even be able to charge less, and, and and build up reserves, right? And these reserves are asset of the town. If there are too many of it, you can distribute them as a dividend. You know, if it's good years, or you you reinvest them. You know, you make a pool. You you provide for for the care of older folks. I mean, there's there's a project in Dover now that could be supported. I mean, you can do all sorts of things, right? And, and, and this is where I come from in the big picture, is keeping these funds in the community for the benefit of the community. There's no need to give them away. And what has been proposed, I mean, it, 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 it raises eyebrows because there's a letter being sent by a hospital council. This is what we want, you know, what we propose to do with the reserve funds was basically pay down debt that, that, that no sane person would pay down. And, and do a few other things to spend those funds down to $4 million I'm not aware of the board given authority to counsel to write a letter like that, to make a statement on behalf of the organization to that extent. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of it. You would have had to vote on it. I would, I would assume so. <clears throat> so I, I don't know where this comes from, but we, we, we're back to the circle of authority, right? Does the board have the authority? enter into this agreement, yes or no? And that's, you know, that's, that's the question. And has the board had the authority just by itself to amend the charter? To, you know, I guess in this case, to, to, to enable it to, to circumvent the vote of the town, of the towns. I hope not. That, I mean, that, that's really as simple as this, this lawsuit is, as simple here. Here is, here are the facts of what the charter says is the facts of what the, the, the non-corporate law says, that the Non-Profit Corporation Act Title 13b says. Judge, please tell us if the authority within the charter is there for the board to do that, because if it's not, it's, it's, it rests with the member towns. That's at least, you know, my reading of it, you know, I mean, that's all I can go by. And if the judge says, yeah, the, the board's able to do this, well, then the board's able to do this, and it, it will proceed. If the judge says, no, the board will, can propose a course of action, has to present it to the communities, and the communities have to vote, well, then that's, I think, what should be done. And this is really all this is about. Uh, the, 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 you know, I, I understand your concern about, about uh, you know, that, that's what, what, what this board will have to decide. But the lawsuit itself is, is, is a very simple, it's two questions. Judge, please tell us. And will you appeal if, if, they, if, if you don't get the, the, the opinion or the judgment in your favor? I, 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 I will have to see what it's based on. I mean, the, what, what's the soundness of the decision that we get? But I think in, in Superior Court, we have very thoughtful justices. Now, and, and the counter question is the same. Will the, will the hospital district appeal if the ruling is against its interest? No, okay, so... Okay. No, I'm, so, just, but, I'm just asking. Yeah, but before I even think, if, if this comes to this, filing an appeal, of course I'd come back and ask everybody what they thought. You know, and, and, and <laughs> I just, I don't act out of a vacuum. Yes, I work hard and I work overtime <laughs> to, to get a point across. But this, this, 
at the end, my goal is, is the same, I think, as everybody's here. That there should be a hospital in the community, and it should be protected. Now, I have my view of protecting is, is it's, it's better protected if there's a fund that protects it, that stays within the community. All the towns, I mean, in, 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 in my sort of at least suggestion that I generally put out in front of the board, and I put it out several times, and you know, unfortunately, it never has been seriously discussed. No investigated. You know, that's the unfortunate thing, and that's why we're there. I mean, I talked with the attorney for the hospital, and I said, you know, uh, and I said this all along, I feel very strongly about these reserve funds because they are the lifeline for healthcare in this community. And in, in, in May, when I said it's time for me to speak to the communities about this, and I don't think I'm bound by a confidentiality agreement between this board and and, and, and Eastern Main Health Services on, on, the, on the contents of what's contemplated in this interim agreement, I really need to talk to them. And, and my concern really, and I said to them, you know, let, let's find a way of, of working with these reserve funds. So they are here in case something, which I don't hope anything bad for Eastern Maine, but if something happens to Eastern Maine, we have the lifeline to bring this back online here. Because if Eastern Maine teeters, if Eastern Maine gets taken over by another entity, that'd be great. Well, it may be bad too because all of a sudden the decisions will not be in Bangor, the decisions might be in Hartford. Well, yeah, or Boston. I that, mean, that's right. Actually, and, and how great would that be? I mean, well, how did it work out for Mass C General comes in or Brigham and Winmans comes in and is now has an influence in, in Maine? Well, if I they, mean, that's the way medicine yeah, but, but, is going. But, but, hang on a sec, but if this were to happen, right? And if we are at that point an independent institution, we can still decide at that point to join because then there's something good to join. At this point, so you don't think Eastern Maine is a good, it, a good I, I, I uh, think, I think institution to, to join? I think Eastern Maine, to give them all the eggs we have at this point with their financial con condition, is an imprudent thing to do. I never said. It makes, you know, if, if, the, if the board, the administration says we can't, you know, we cannot run a hospital even though we have tax backing, we never seriously discussed even approaching the communities with that alternative because the minute that was brought up, it was shut down. You know, it was just like, no, we don't want to do this, you know. Why can't we talk? I mean, why can we not talk? Why can we not talk? I don't know. You know, I don't know why it has to be just like this. So I. I don't say Eastern Maine is a bad outfit, not at all, but I, I say I have concerns and I want to protect the communities. And the way you protect the communities, you keep those funds local, you, you dedicate them to help the hospital. You know, we'll, we'll buy an x-ray machine, we'll, we'll put a wall up or whatever it is. You know? It's not that I want to not use these funds, but I want to have them with the community because maybe in 20 years these little hospitals won't be needed, right? But who knows? I mean, Town hospitals merge into regional hospitals, and maybe this will go away in the future because healthcare is delivered a different way. I don't know yeah, how. But people will always be sick in the same way. Th th that's right. So that's that's but, okay. ridiculous. That's but, a ridiculous but, statement. But, but, well, I was in Dexter. No, when, it's not when the sky was statement. falling in 1975. I was there. Literally, you had relatives that weren't speaking to each other because one lived in Dover and one lived in Dexter. Right. And they, the same argument. Right. My aunt needed this, my uncle needed that, and you can't tell me that you can close this hospital. That's imprudent. Right. Things change. Right. No, there's no question. You're right. Same way. You, you know, yeah, but Dexter it's to happen. Dover to, to my The schools were the same way. Right. But I, I think you misunderstood what I, what, what I was trying to say here. My point is... If delivery mechanisms change, there will still be a need for health care and well-being. And if there's a fund here local, that fund can provide it. Once this money is gone, the, the, the local resource will be gone. So th this is my view, and we, we can agree to disagree, but this is how I see it. And this is why I really go out of my way to try to, to get, this, get this to a broader decision. And if the broad decision is, that the proposal on this table right now to give it all away is the way to go. I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to. <laughs> that's the vote, and that's well, the vote of the Well, then you vote against it. You vote against it. Well, if 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 I have the right to vote as a citizen, as as as, as a as part owner, right? Right now, no. Right now, this this is being removed from those who have to, the right to decide this. You can vote against it as hmm? a board member. 
Yes. So? Yeah, but at this, at this point, I don't even think the board has the authority to vote on this without approval from the towns. So, until this is determined, I think it's fair enough to just get it determined, and if it's determined that the board can vote, the board will vote very quickly. As uh, we went there last Wednesday's meeting, but this will be a question of not even a discussion of two minutes, and boom, it will be done. You know, the, 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 I don't think there's an issue there at all, but that is the danger right now. The danger is, this would have been voted in without the proper discussion in the communities. Well, now the discussion is happening. And, and some like it, some don't. Yeah, I, I understand and, and, that. And, and, but and I don't do it out, out of malice, that's what I want to oh say. No, I, I, I do it what I think is best. I don't do, make their decision based on what they think is best. That's, you know, that, that's why we have vehicles to decide these disputes. I mean, that's that's what we live in. We live in a, you know... In a, in a, no question. No question. Particularly in, in rural Maine. We live in, a, in, in communities where people get <laughs> together and make decisions. Yeah. That's yeah. Of course, I have no legal background. You know, again, been a selectman for a number of years. I fully expect that the HAD4 board has the authority to enter into some interim agreement, but I don't believe they have the authority to basically give the hospital away under any terms without the votes of the town citizens. <clears throat> you know, I've heard the question talked about of, of do they have the right to, do they have the knowledge to, the expertise. I think those are good questions. The board has the ability to operate the business. I don't think the board has the op I don't think the board has the right to liquidate the business. And, and in all in all the stuff that I have seen, if you're giving the hospital to another nonprofit to operate, you're liquidating your business which is dissolving the business. HAD board has letters of incorporated, it's incorporated, it has a charter. And I don't think they can, they can operate under the charter, but I don't think they can, can dissolve within their charter. That's just my own personal opinion. That's why, why I am in agreement with getting a, a judicial decision on that portion. If the agreement that was going to be voted on has repercussions of financial problems for the hospital, uh, if it cannot take place, either because of a legislative issue or because of not having the right to give it away, uh, that's just another burden on the hospital to, it's not going to value the health care of anybody in the, in the area. I think it's a, I think it's a pretty, pretty straightforward decision for myself, and I think most of our board members felt that way. Let's get a decision that's going to create less hardship on the hospital community financially. When you mentioned that somebody works with a provider to get health care, uh, I know that people at one point in time, I had dealt with Northwoods as well, and I could still go to the Dover Hospital to get treatment. That doctor could refer the treatment to the Dover Hospital. So if they were referring them to the Greenville Hospital because it was in their system, that's that's dealing for financial reasons as opposed to somebody's convenience and health. Just a personal opinion. Oh, that's a very good point. <laughs> very good point. And then he gets back to dealing with a corporate business of how they view things compared to how a 
what we have now. Yeah, I mean it's That's a non-profit. Mm -hmm. I mean. Mm -hmm. But it's a yeah. it's a it's a business that's well they gotta the, keep the, the doors open dollars, and they gotta right. turn on the lights yeah. because at the end of the day Eastern Maine that is a business when they don't have any money to buy stuff nobody's gonna give them supplies because they're a hospital they have to have that financial sure. to be able to do that or it is gonna blow I mean and, and that's my basis for concern is you know Mayo doesn't seem to have a problem dealing with people. They issue purchase orders, they've got credit accounts, things like that. Eastern Maine is operating at this point, but if they get into a credit crunch of some time, that's that's going to upset their operation and, and their ability to support health care as well. We thought when they were here mm -hmm. presenting, the, it, the lack of a backstop was really, we've got all of these assets, the this, this $16 million, and I think of equal importance, maybe even greater importance than the $16 million, is the structure of the HAD, the, the force that it is with the 13 communities, what it allows you to do. It allows us to be independent for as, as long as we want. I, um, you, you know, Mayo may be the hub, but someday it may be the spoke. And the ambulance service that, that is going to move patients down that spoke is going to be more important than ever. And the 13 communities are going to have to figure out a way to pay for it. And we have a perfect mechanism for it right now in, in the structure of the HAD. And we also have probably more than enough funds to drive a service like that and, and even something maybe more robust. Um, what a fantastic backstop uh, in the event that this merger doesn't go the way we all hope that it will, that, it, that we turn into a spoke. It, at least we have the resources, we actually have them, uh, why give them up? Now when I asked uh, Rick that, he, he, he kind of, he had no answer. He, he didn't know why we had to give them up. It just, it hasn't really, I got the sense it had never really been discussed. Now, and I thought, that's, that was just the impression I got. Mm -hmm. um, that $16 million is not, to, to Eastern Maine, it's not that much money. No, absolutely not. But to us, it's the moon. It literally could keep our communities from having to raise taxes uh, to, to provide an ambulance service or, or a, an emergency room service. If that ends up all we can have, we could do it forever. So. Yeah, but but if you take the 16, to me, you take the 16 million dollars you have right now as a whole. If you basically spend that now, right now, 16 million dollars, that's going to build a lot of money over years, over time, and a lot of money that could be used back into the hospital, back into an ambulance service, in for a long, long time. But if we take that 16 million dollars and we knock that down to four, and then we give it. Away, that four million dollars to Eastern Maine really is worth nothing. I mean, but for us, it isn't worth much now either because you're not building that much again. And that's my confusion to this is when we heard, you know, we're going to take the 16 and we're going to pay off the debt at seven. Then we're going to build a new office and extra for two. We're going to redo the facade at one and a half. Um, to me, I mean, it's it's like all we're, they're doing is trying to knock that money down. I don't, well, yeah, I, don't, I think it's, it's more of a PR, you know, quote-unquote, effort. Because at the end of the day, when you take a balance sheet, right, that's 42 million on each side, it has 7 million in debt, and you have 7 million in cash against it, you have 28 million equity, you knock out the 7 million in debt with 7 million in cash, you still have 28 million in equity. Correct. And now the argument that's being made is, well, but the hospital building isn't really worth that much. So then you really threw money away. I mean, I, I just don't, you know, I, I, I cannot follow this. I mean, it, it, My thing is but, the reserve that, is worth more money sitting there as a whole yeah. than it is just getting rid of it. I mean, that as a whole is guaranteed health care for our community or to help offset cost of health care for Eastern Maine through Mayo, through the ambulance, or whatever for a very long time. 
And maybe we can't hold on to 16 days. Well, maybe, but if we could hold on to 8, 10. Yeah, but the, the, yes, we can hold on to all of it. But in, in a scenario, right? I mean, it, 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 it just takes negotiation at the end of the day, right? And we're not going to solve this tonight, I think. No. But, but I think the question, if I can just renew it, my, my request for the board to consider joining in on on getting these two narrow questions resolved. And this would be the only thing, the only involvement, and as I said, there's going to be no charge at all for this. From my end, not from anybody. I mean, that, I cannot, I wouldn't even expect that there's any so financial who's, cost. who's filing it? Hmm? Who's filing it? Well, Beth will, will be filing the amendment. Who, who's, who's filing the lawsuit. So, I mean, you could file a separate lawsuit, but at the end it would all be consolidated anyway, so why not bring it all in front of the same justice who, who looks at the entire proceeding? And they're separate issues. I mean, the, the, the justice will not get confused on those, on, on, on the, on those counts. Well, um, any further discussion? I mean, this quickly turns into, uh, they should have negotiated a better deal in the hospital. Uh, and I get that, because we all have all these, what we think are great ideas of how this thing might look better. Or, and I'm and, sure and they- Yeah, we don't know what the deal is. So I, well, I we to sit here- Well, they did tell us, but that here, isn't I, the I, question I, before us tonight, really. Right, exactly. The question exactly. is, do we want to, to get clarification on whether they have authority to proceed or not? Uh, personally, I would like to stop them. I don't think they have the authority. I hope they don't have the authority. I guess that's a better way for me to phrase it. You hope they don't have the authority? I hope they cannot do what they're proposing to do. I don't think it's in the best interest of Sangerville. Well, at least without coming to the town and asking. It, it, this current process, we, we, should have, we should have, our citizens should have a say in this. I mean, that's the end, that's the gist of it, but do the citizens have a say or not in this process? And, and do we know that the citizens aren't going to end up having a say? Do you know that? Well, if, they, if the judge decides they don't, well, then the board will proceed, right? If the judge decides they do, well, the board will develop a proposal. It might be this proposal. It might just vote it to send this to the town. And it will be sent to the town and voted on by the towns up or down. And, I mean, and we don't know, we don't know, sitting here tonight, whether this uh, 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 initial agreement is to, to say to Eastern Maine, okay, yes, we're, we're, we're going to start dancing in the ballroom together. And that then they'll no, we, set it to the, to, to the towns. To, to, to vote, for a vote. Oh, we know that, that's not what it is. It, it, you're guaranteeing that's not what's yeah, going to happen? That's not what the, the draft in front of me it says, no. The draft in front of me says that this is the agreement to enter into this merger. There's several steps, of course, you have to get regulatory approval and what have you. It, it contemplates that certain legislation will be proposed to the legislature it is, has not been shown to us at this point, so I don't, I don't know why any, you know, person on this board even wants to vote for something that they haven't seen yet. And that this legislature, this, this legislation will change the charter to, a, to, a, to provide for this merger vehicle that we've all been talking about. And that then, at a future date, the board will vote to contribute all the assets to the merger vehicle, which will then be taken over by Eastern Maine, but Eastern Maine will become the sole, the sole owning member of this vehicle. So this is before the board in this proposed agreement. And, and you're guaranteeing that, 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 that before they go to the legislature, they're not going to set a vote to the towns? What they have said at the meeting that I wasn't there on the 16th, and it's written in the, in, in the, in the protocol, is that they expect to present proposed legislation to the board in November at the November board meeting, which is the end of November, to be filed as emergency legislation if approved by the board in December. 
So I do not think this allows for any time for the communities to discuss this. Absolutely. And the communities, that the agreement doesn't contemplate, it doesn't have no language in it, that this agreement is subject to the towns voting in favor of this. There's no language like that in that, I can tell you that. So is it, well, I don't know, you're not supposed to assume, but it's safe to assume that part of that legislative amendment may clarify all that. that well, the, may, amendment, the amendment may make it so that you can approve all this without going to the town. That's correct, because the only, uh, th there was a board vote a year or two ago, and I cannot put my finger on it, but it was, it was basically this concept was, was presented to the board by council, that the final decision will be with this board. That, 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 that's the statement he made. And I assume, at least until this all started here, that was still the, the, the intention. And on Monday, I think our discussion, Kelly was there, and she said, well, this is not the final vote. And I said, well, what is the final vote? And she says, well, the final vote is to contribute these, or this came out of the discussion. I don't know if she said it that way. But out of the discussion, but the final vote is the vote of the board to contribute the assets to this vehicle. And then I said, well, this is exactly the problem we have, is that the decision is removed from the towns to the board. And that is the issue, and this is what this is all about, is to determine who has this authority. If the judge says the board has the authority, it will all proceed, right? If, if I were sitting in Craig Nelson's or... or, or you know, strategizing what to do as the hospital in light of this litigation. There's nothing in this litigation that asks the stopping of a development of, of, of legislation. Now, if, if the judge rules the board doesn't have the authority to do that, well, then that board is null and void, obviously. But if, if the judge rules that the board has the authority to amend the charter, well, then that vote to, to submit legislation is good. So there's nothing that's, that, that, that drastically stops this process that's currently anticipated, you know, no matter how much I disagree with it, but it will certainly stop the entering into this agreement. But the, the, the district can, cert, can, can seek to change the charter with an agreement or without an agreement in preparation of, of something in the future. And whether this agreement then is entered into in, in March or in, in November, I, I, what, what difference does it make? Because the regulatory hurdles are still there to, you know, to be taken. And they, I mean, they, they might have to be delayed a little bit, but if, if this all ultimately fails, there's no indefinite delay here if I were on the other side of the table here. That's my understanding of this, right? This is, again, it's not a legal opinion. I'm not the attorney. But, so, but if, on the other hand, the judge says the board has not the authority to either do a merger, enter into a merger agreement without approval of the towns. It's, this is all it is. And once the towns approve it, of course the board can ex execute the plan. So that, then the board will have to wait until the towns vote and the board will have to develop a proposal. And I would almost venture to guess it will be a better proposal because the, the opinion of the towns has to, have to, be, has to be taken into consideration. And it will have to go out, and they will have to present it and, and get support for it, you know? Then they need half the people and one in each town that vote. So it, I, think it's, I don't think there's anything that inherently uh, destructive in this, but it, it, it certainly would bring clarity. Because if this weren't here, and, and today um, <coughs> you apparently have, 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 have uh, Amanda's memo, uh, the opposing counsel filed a motion to dissolve the restraining order. Well, the only purpose would be, once it's dissolved, to call a meeting and vote on the on the on the uh, on, on on the merger agreement. I mean, what other reason is there? Because otherwise, you know, they'd say, well, let's let's sort this out. Let's put the information currently before the court. Is the request for information? Let's put the information out there. Let's have people look at it. You know, why is it secret? It's a public entity. We, we can look at the, we can look at what's going on. <coughs> so. And this just gets this other determination as to the power of the board. And this is the only thing I'm here to ask for. I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we support this.
I'll second for discussion. Um, I just, I feel like um, looking out for Sagerville's interests, this determination could be important. Um, I would love to see this revisited in the way that you describe, where we can have a, 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 a conversation about the potential of a, of a backstop, of, of what the HAD could mean to us. All of that is up for grabs. And, and I don't think the citizens of Sankville even understand what it is. And I, th I think they should. Now, if this fails, I, I suspect this vote will go through and yeah. that'll be that. And, it, and maybe, uh, maybe it wouldn't even amount to a delay. I mean, if, you, if the judge says this has no merit, then I don't, I don't, we're not certainly harming the process in the least. But if the judge says this has merit, well then it's self-evident, it has merit, it, then it should be slowed. So right. you're proposing that we enter, we enter into a lawsuit without any legal counsel? I, would, I think that, uh, I think if we can slow this process down, I think it's worth, I, 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 are you afraid that there's some counter some risk to the town by entering into this? I would never enter a lawsuit without counsel. Do you want to Ever. make a motion that we get counsel? No. I am 100% uh, opposed to this. And, and, and I am cautioning you not to enter into a lawsuit without counsel. Why, I mean, no, 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 I, no, 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 and you know I'm here, and and no, no, that, that, that's that's no. the answer. I mean, that's uh, that's fine. That's problem. great. That's great. We should have scheduled it for another time when I knew about it that I that all of you were going to be here, and um, we should have scheduled it for another time. Mm -hmm. So um, she should be here clearly if we're entering into lawsuit, and she's our attorney. I don't see this as an adversarial thing. If there's no merit to this. They're going to vote next week or the following week. If uh, there is I, merit... I, I, who said that? Well, I mean, when, once they can legally vote, they're going to vote. Who said that? I was at Gerald their meeting. said that. I was at their meeting. They were ready to vote. They had to, they had to delay. Did they say once we can get the restraining order? Um, whatever. They would vote? Did they say that? Did they say that? I'm just asking you an easy question. Did they? I think we all know that they're ready to vote. They were ready to vote on Wednesday. They would have voted if they hadn't received a restraining order. Well, I thank you all for your time. Thank, thank you. you very much, Gerald. Don't forget your card. <laughs> Here. Oh, the whole, you're, you're all leaving? Bye, Don. Yeah, what's that way? Like? Like oh, you're going to Monson. Oh, so yeah, you're all leaving. Fun. Thank you. I will. Thank you very much. We uh, actually, as a board, should make sure when we do have guests that we do tell them that we're recording, just so that they know, because I, I guess a lot of boards don't record. They do. Who does? But the uh, mayo. No, no, I know that, but I'm just saying in, no, I in just, general. No, I, I just thought uh, it was a bit ironic that they didn't expect ours was recorded yeah, they, when they record their own. Go figure. Yeah. Uh, but no. Record? What's that? I didn't realize they did. Well, I happen to be sitting right beside the, the, oh. the lady who's in charge of that. Oh. Right. So I, 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 I would never, and that's... I'm just, I'm not advising you in one way or the other, except that I'm saying that I, I am 100% against it, and I am also just cautioning the, our board 
with did you ask MMA? No, no, but we can. We might as well. It's free. I suspect they're going to say they won't give us an answer. They won't give us an answer because it's 13 towns and it's right. Yeah, I've read that whole thing with the HAD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so they won't give us right. an answer. Right. So I mean, I'm as a board, here. anything we've done, we would never sign anything as a board unless we had clarity. Yeah, yeah I, and I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm not. I'm not afraid to. Uh, I'm not afraid to spend a little money on this. I think it's that important. But I will. I will tell you that I won't sign it, no matter what legal counsel says. Well, so, okay. So it's can I, I mean, so, yeah. Right. Why? Yeah. Why are you? Help me understand. I guess why are you so against the question that he's asking? Be because I I think that I think. Uh, first of all, and I've said this from day one, and I know I know I've said this is I don't feel comfortable that we have the facts, all the facts that we understand the entire. Specifically, can you give me an example yeah. of an area? I mean, we talk about the assets and the assets and the assets. Do I mean? Because we were told that's what the assets. And yes, um, Nancy Glidden said these are the. But one. Why do we not think that, it, I'm just saying, Eastern Maine, they're taking us on. They're taking on a huge, a, a huge operation. Maybe they need those assets. Maybe they need, maybe, maybe they need them to kickstart our affiliation with them. I mean, you know, you're, we're all saying that they're, that they're not flush with money, that they're, you know, Moody's and whatever. And... And then we're saying, oh, well, we do the merger, but don't give them any money. You know, you know, that we're tying, we need to provide health care. And, and personally, I know as far as recruiting physicians as a standalone hospital, we're not going to be able to do it. So we can, and I know you're saying, he was saying something about selling the hospital for a dollar. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think the assets are are part of the, of the, uh, of the um, agreement. I think they're part of it, and so you know everybody's. And I, and I'm I'm extremely upset um, that. And again, that's you know maybe I don't know maybe you know and everybody's saying well, you're so stupid you don't understand that. I haven't heard you. Say well, that. no, I know you I, haven't. No, but but I, but if I keep no 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 and I and I, <laughs> I apologize. But but I keep saying I don't you know I don't know that I know all the facts and 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 it, it's like what don't you get about seventeen million dollars? Well, again, you're saying we're all saying that's not a whole heck of a lot of money. Not to them, but right. it is to the community. Right. It's huge to the community. It's huge to the community. When when the median income for Sangerville is twenty eight thousand dollars. Is it even that it's, high? <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to seriously. And that was I in mean, two thousand. It may be worse. I bet it is. I bet it's. I. But I'm just saying that you know to put these numbers. I feel that I was irresponsible in signing that letter in that I didn't feel comfortable with the, the, the facts, I, that I didn't feel as though I knew, I know the facts. And so therefore now we've disseminated information that has gotten people saying, whoa, and then we've got the, all this money. To all of us, it's, hey, that's a lot of money. But to this hospital that needs to run now our hospital, you know, they need that money. Our hospital needs that money. Yeah, what? Our hospital. Our community right. needs that money. Why? Because we What's have to provide in services. What's going to happen? Don't this you is think my Eastern thing. Maine, uh, uh, just, don't you think Eastern Maine is going to provide services? And you know, don't you think that they're going to provide services? Well, I mean, at what level? I don't know what they're going to do two, three, four years from now. I have no idea what they're going to do. I just my I, my focus. This is my sole focus. I got one string on my guitar. I'm not going to stop singing. <laughs> so you're going to get stuck listening to it. Is the ambulance? Okay. We've clearly been told how bad that ambulance service loses money. 
we was hinted that there's already been talk about them coming back to us to help fund that ambulance. Mm -hmm. My fear is two years from now, we are going to, hopefully all three of us are still sitting here, and we're going to sit here and have the conversation of how much we have to increase taxes because we now have to absorb part of an ambulance cost because we're responsible to our community for that. And oh crap, we really shouldn't have gave away all $16 million. That's my fear. Yeah. Can we hang on to $4 million, $5 million, and keep the head? Have, I don't want the money. I don't want $1.8 million coming to Zango. No. I want that money. I want our head. I want them to take and hold on to some of that reserve. And they can take the, the gain and reinvest it back, give it back to Eastern Maine, invest it back into the hospital. I don't care. But I want this community, because as you said, as low as our medium income is, we can't afford to lose that money today knowing there's a chance you're going to have to pay for it later. Meaning we're going to have to help fund that ambulance. That's my problem. And wow. that's my fear. Yeah. And we keep getting reminded of this fear. So that's why I'm not going to give up on this. Um, now, in regards to your letter, I talked to somebody today um, from another town. doesn't really matter who. Um, it was a very one-sided, a little heated conversation for a little bit. Few choice words went back and forth. Um, at the end, we I got swayed over solely to the reserves. What I wanted to talk about, what I wanted to try to explain to him. I was repeatedly told sixteen million dollars is not there. That that money's not real. And I said, okay. I said, let's go with your theory. It's not real money. That sixteen million doesn't exist. He goes, it doesn't. I said, okay. If it doesn't exist then they can't pay off $7 million in debt because it's not real money. If it's not real money, you're not paying off $7 million, right? Right. He finally, well, all right, so there's seven there. And then he goes, well, maybe it's close to eight. I said, well, whatever. You want to call it eight, they're telling me seven. I'm not going to argue about a million. Not only we got 16 to talk about. He goes, well, it's not there. Okay. This whole shell game back and forth. And I said, okay. I said, so let's let's just go with your seven, your eight, my seven, I don't care. So now we're 16, we're down to eight million. Right. Yep, but that's not real money. I said, okay, oh, well, that's, this, that's, this, real, yeah. this, not, this money that's not real, I said, they're already planning to spend $2 million on an office building. Yeah, right. with unreal money. With unreal money. Right. I right. said, he was well. I said, okay. I said, let's go with that there. <laughs> Why do you want to spend $2 million on an office building in Dexter so you can give it away? I go, there's already plenty of office space in Dexter that's sitting vacant that I'm sure Dexter would love for somebody to invest in and get back up on the market. They don't need another building. Well, just to answer, I mean, I, I, didn't, I don't want you to lose your turn of thought. <laughs> you keep going. Keep All right, going. so oh, that God. took him down. We're now down to the six million. Right. I right. said, so we finally agreed that maybe some of this is real money. And now, then I said, well, I said, there's another million and a half that they plan to spend to redo the facade the facial of the hospital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that, that probably needs to be done. I said, well, I'm not saying it doesn't need to be done, but it doesn't need to be done if you're going to give it away. If you're going to hand the keys over, mm -hmm. I don't need to spend all that money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, I, mean, that's I said, so that's another happen. million and a half. I said, so now we're down in the $4 million category. I go, if we can't hold on to, you know, if you don't want to hold, you can't fight for the 16 in your... I have no idea why you have to pay a business completely off to hand it over debt free. But if we have to do that, okay, that's great. Let's get it to eight. But I don't understand why we got to spend two on a building. We got to do this. There's got to be some of that money we can hold on to as a had, not as a town. And right now we're not doing that. Now, if everybody could come back to us and say, we're, we changed our mind. We're going to do this merger. We're going to adjust the emergency legislation is to redo the HAD so that we can maintain $5 million and use those investments to further the hospital along for Eastern Maine. I would, wouldn't say another word, but mm -hmm. nobody's doing that. And I think that's the piece that us, for our community, we need to fight for. Well, I mean, 
And I'm not saying Gerald's way is the way to get there. I don't know how to get there. But I do know they were going to, that is not in the contract because we've asked. Um, and they were going to sign it. So if, if it was going to be signed. And the contract, that's the final contract that they were going to sign. Nobody's given us, we can't look at the contract. Everybody says it's I the initial. So. And that's the point. Is I've not these, seen it either. These points, so these points are, have, were not argued. They all agreed that that's exactly what the outcome was going to be when they, when they did their presentation. Rick has agreed that that's the outcome. I, I, yes. Yeah, no, I mean, and I, so I those, mean, are, those points aren't debated, right? No, and I, I think it's all real money. I mean, I, you know, and yeah. somebody's saying, oh, it's just I, a number on a piece of paper, it's, was, it's real dollars because you, you can't go through an auditor. Once I asked a year. Rick, I said, Rick, why can't we keep the HAD in just a few million dollars? And he, he did, I don't know, but he, I'll ask, yeah, well, that's but we can't sign a contract and then ask, no, that's but, you know what I mean. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think, I don't think we have all the facts and I, I and I agree with that. Yeah, yeah I definitely would agree That's with that. kind of the whole problem. But I also, I, and I, I don't think we're armed to sue them for the facts. I don't think, I don't think I, that, I, I don't think that's a solution. I don't think that's the, I don't think that's, well, I guess we have. Really what do two you, options? How, what do we? What do you think? How do we? You know how I feel. How do we move that forward? I mean, I what, was, what the, a suit? No, 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 not a suit. I mean, how do you? How do you make that board not sign this contract and put and that in jeopardy a, and get that negotiation going to try to hold that? Hold. What? Or hold that reserve for our community. I don't. I don't think we should. Okay. Well, that, see, that's and that's I okay. I don't think we should. I but don't, and, but don't think, you think all of Sangerville should get to have this conversation? It, it depends on whether. It, 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 I mean. Well, actually. It, well, here's the thing. Maybe here's not. The thing. Right. So at the end of the day, That's it's right. the charter. I mean, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It's if you and read it, that charter, and we'll, that answers your question, right. and it's how you want to read it. Do you read that charter in a way that says they can, or do you read it? that it doesn't say anything about it. And, and when I read it, that's what it says. It doesn't say that they can. It doesn't address the point. There's nothing I don't read in that charter about what they're trying to do. Right, right. So now you're interpreting, well, it doesn't say it, so that must mean we can. But I don't really think that's, I don't know if that's the case. Well, that's as far as, I mean, I've read them portions. Trying but to I, the I, thing I, think, I, I really, uh, uh, you know, is that it, it seems like everyone's portraying this, that this is just a quick deal, that this is, this, my, you know, last two weeks, holy mackerel, you know. And I, I, that's not the case. No, I never got the impression that it was quick. It was, it was, uh, it just seemed as though it was methodical in that there was, there was only one outcome. I mean, even if yeah, I listened I to the 22nd I, I, and I believe interview, that there, there was no negotiation. I, what interview? When, when we had Rick and Gerald here, they both agreed that there was no negotiation. There was no the back board, and forth. The board themselves did not say there and raise their hand and say, well, we think we should. Right here. Let's right, propose no, this idea. They, no. He said basically entrusted, everything was brought to them they entrusted, by the administration. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's the impression incorrect. I got when I listened no, to the tape. No, that's incorrect. They, were they entrusted a firm to, nego to, to broker the deal. I'll have to listen again. Yeah, but they didn't say that. No, they didn't. I mean, that's, I mean, the, the administration perhaps was advised what, what was going on. But, I mean, they have attorneys who are brokering the deal with Eastern Maine attorneys. Well... The, the there were no negotiations. That was clear. Well, and I asked Rick about the HAD and even a few million dollars. And he said he had had a discussion with, I think, Craig is the... Craig Nelson, yeah. And he said, as long as there's an HAD, this deal won't happen. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know why that's the case. I don't know why this giant monstrosity of a hospital would care. But for some reason, that's what he said. Well, uh, I, yeah, I think they have the, the charter. I mean, that I think we all understand has to be changed. Right, but it could be changed in a way that offers a backstop for us. 
if, if it can be changed at all, it can be and, changed and, in a way and, that and helps us. And that boat's us. not changing the charter. That boat's not changing no, no, the charter. That's a du- that's, that's a different strategy. Right. That's a separate strategy. But so, but so, the vote is to agree is is agreeing to move. I'm not going to say give away. Is to move all of the assets, including our cash and investments, over to. That's to, correct. I to mean, I, I, so I, I'm saying that's on. correct. I don't know that that's correct either because I that's don't what know we the were facts. Told. That's what we were told. Right. And and I'm saying that's not a bad deal. Okay. I'm, and and that's never, not a bad deal. I I don't think it's a great deal. I, I think it's a bad deal. I can't imagine. Okay. And that's that. That is, I, I you know. And to finish what I was just, saying before, when I was talking to that individual in this other town, who was very much in favor of this, and your letter that, or I'll say me, my letter that I wrote that we sent out was so much misconceived and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah when as I was all said and done and explained that same scenario about that reserve and how much money it is and what they're planning on doing it and what we could do with that with the potential of the ambulance service and how we could secure longevity of the hospital with those funds he was fully in favor of that thought process that he was going back to his representative to ask why aren't we doing this and how do we make this happen so, and you and, and you know, and here's the question: Do we want to be in the hospital in, in the hospital business? I mean, as as community, we are. Know? We already are. We have. Been. We have been for forty three years. Right. I, well, yeah. I mean, yes. we've been in it. We've we've been in an age, but but now we're saying, oh, we're going to have this money, and we're going to be involved. We're, in we're, we're already the same way. We already are. We we've been doing this for forty three years, and it's worked pretty well. That's my point. There you go. So now we're going to give that up, that 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 oh, no, autonomy. No, no. Oh no, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, okay, no, I, I, yeah, no, I, I'm just saying that the H A. I, 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 I don't think we're giving up autonomy. Do you not think? Well, that, no, do you she, think no. they're a standalone institution as, right now? Yes, the it, thirteen communities own everything. Yeah, but do you? I mean, we have so much support from Eastern Maine. And from the hospitals in Boston, and from tele- telemetry or whatever yes. it's called. I mean, w- yeah, well, that's not going to. Why would that change? I mean, it's all about healthcare. I mean, they're not. I mean, if there are synergies now, there will be synergies next week. I mean, we've done this for forty-three years. We're gonna. We we maybe could do it for another forty-three. I don't know. I don't know how you're gonna recruit physicians. We just. It's funny. The day we were there, they got a doc. They got a couple. So far, every meeting I've been to, they got a doc. I would have been to one. But they got a <laughs> guy coming in from Jordan. <laughs> that was good, sorry. But they got, and, and they said they were at capacity. So Actually, the, the, I don't remember the numbers, so I'm not going to repeat them. But the, when we was at that meeting, all the financial stuff, and she clearly said it, everything was up. They were way, all the numbers are way better at that meeting we were at the other night than what they told us. Things things were on, moving in the right direction, which is a good thing. Yeah, they weren't losing. You know what I mean? Things were way better than what they had hoped. So, I mean, it was all positive. I didn't get any negative out of that meeting. Actually, it was very no. positive. Everything was no. If you sat in that meeting that we went to, and obviously I've only been to one, but if you sat in that meeting and you listened to everything you said, the thought of them getting out of the hospital business or merging wouldn't have been part of that conversation. It was it was that positive of the synergies of the departments and you know we got new people and this is going on and we're making more money and I just I was confused this it wasn't the meeting I was expecting I was expecting to hear you know well geez no we're short to we're short two for this and we can't find this and we don't have any of this and well that all happens in subcommittees as far as you know like I mean uh, you know just as far as boards you know the or not boards but committees you know there's strategic planning committee there's budget and finance committee, and you know there's there's quality of care and professionalism. Right, but what I'm saying though is, at that right, monthly right. meeting, every one of those people spoke. And right, it was they all, all weigh in, and if they, yeah. But well, it was all positive. I, that's great. That's great. That's great. So we're. I'm with you. This ambulance service is is the one thing I just I just refuse to stick my head in the sand over. I would I would love to just take it away from them. Say, okay, here's part of the deal. You don't even have to worry about ambulance. We got it. We're keeping some money. We're keeping the HAD, but it's our baby. It's that important to us. We can't 
But we can't. Who's gonna, I mean, you're saying we. Who's we? HAD. We could do it exactly yeah. the way we're doing it now. We're already yeah, we're doing it. it. It's our Who's service now. And but then I, we, I haven't found anybody to give me clarity. But the, the scary thing is when the CEO sat there and we talked about the ambulance service, if Eastern Maine did decide that they didn't want to provide it, who's responsible for, for, to provide that? And she pointed, she said, you are, meaning the communities. It's our responsibility to provide that. Service. I guess it falls within the 911 district, or she said it has to do with your 911. Is there it, somewhere in there that can, they, is there verbiage that clearly states that we are responsible for that? I don't know. Because if somebody can say we're not, then I guess we don't have to fight in the game. I mean, well, it's well, like you're required to provide sanitation. You're required to provide this. You're required to provide that. that. So our answer to providing sanitation is we have an agreement with Dover to take our trash. And by state statute, we have to have some arrangement. Yes. Either we do it ourselves or we're. Yes. So the, is, the question so is is there a similar statute? I'm 911 service. That there probably would be, but I can look it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, she clearly that said be, that. That would be a, I'm sure. That's where I'm going. Is right. I'm, I mean, she yep. was a professional that should right. have known. Right. You know, if Eastern Maine is not going to, you know, because Eastern Maine doesn't provide the 911 service now. They have capital. It's a transport system. The, but don't they have, I mean, I was on their website um, doing a lot of research. Just what, what, mm -hmm. are, we, what are we working sure. with here? And um, it looked, I mean, I, I was looking at the ambulance and it looked as though, so they subcontracted to Capital, is that correct? Or is Capital? Capital is a, I don't know if they call it an affiliation. It's a, it's separate, but it's a part of Eastern Maine. It's not, that's it's Capital, you know what I mean? But is, right. it a, is it a for-profit? I'm not sure exactly the technical part of that, but it is a transport service. It is not a 911 service. You know, they're not responding to somebody slipping and falling or a, a heart attack. It's they transport from one facility to the next is what she she's the one that told us that here. So, so Bangor, they rely on Bangor Fire, Bangor Fire. Yeah, Bangor may have their own emergency vehicle. And then all the other surrounding ambulances. Well, I was thinking of the other towns that I've been in contact mm -hmm. with. I know Hudson pays a $2,000 contract price for ambulance service and it's probably simply the transport with capital bradford but they're part of a, the had so their ambulance would come out of bradford but their fire department has ems so i mean that all kind of makes sense that it's, everybody it has does to have seem it logical it does yeah. seem logical mm -hmm. but if you're going to be in the yeah. nine you, you can't take a 911 call you can't send anybody to it right right so and the county takes the 911 is that correct the county takes it, like the sheriff does, right? Sheriff 911, it goes yeah. to dispatch. Yeah, through the county. Right, right the county. through the county, yeah. yes. So so maybe it's the county that has to supply the... Well, if you were uh, 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 an undesignated township or, or a, a plantation, you probably would pay like you do law, like we do law enforcement. Right. So, I mean, conceivably that could be, you know... Well, that wouldn't work for us because we are... We just, You're an organized town. We're an organized town. Be like a fire department. <laughs> Either way, if it, let's just say, all right, let's just go with that theory. If it wasn't the county level, if the county's going to be responsible for that, you can bet you're, that we're paying it. Yeah, sure. I mean, you're still, no, you're still, we already, the point is, we, pay we, already have, tax, we already got a working system and we have plenty of money to run it. So, and this is just total pie in the sky. If, if I had the, the, I, the ability to negotiate with Eastern Maine, that's one of the things I would, I'd say you guys don't even have to have this anymore. We'll take it off. Your I, would, I would kick you for saying that. Yeah, me too. No, I'd say that. But we'll, we're, I would, but we're going to keep yeah. our money. I would rather go the other way. I would rather secure the reserve and let them know that. And that and that's when I say that. That's what I'm saying is is that money. No, it's not going to be Eastern Maine's to borrow from or to take from. But whatever that money makes, I'm sure give it back to them. I don't care about that. But at least we would have that nest egg. That well, the interesting could. thing is they actually, if if we existed in our current form under that arrangement where essentially we're helping Eastern Maine the same way that we support Mayo now, only just they're running it, uh, they would actually have more access to capital with our existence than they will without us. Right. They can't borrow money like we can. So we, let's say, for example, the hospital needs a new roof and they want to borrow money to do that. We could borrow money more cheaply than they can. Much more cheaply. They had can. 
Yeah. Like, way better. For some reason, that's not of interest to them. But why wouldn't why wouldn't the ad be an interest for them? I mean, I see that. I see you if, if you're asking me to speculate, I'd say it's it's competition. We're competing for the same patients. That would be the only rationale I could see for not wanting the HAD. Even if you restructured it so that they still had control, and so but, the HAD didn't have that. I mean, well, then you could reconstitute it maybe. I have no idea. It makes no sense to me that, that they wouldn't want to work hand in glove with us because there really is seems like a, some real powerful synergies there. Mm -hmm. We have access to the bond bank that they can, they can barely peek over the door in. Uh, so we, there's things we could do. Um, but, it, but more importantly, in talking to both representatives who were totally on different sides of this, they agreed that none of this has been discussed. That's what I found disconcerting. Well, I was hoping, I mean, a, whatever. I mean, a, a previous chair and a co-chair, you would have thought at that level, right. they yeah. would know these details. And that was, I was a little taken when they did yeah, I thought for sure one was going to say, oh, yeah, we had all kinds of discussions like that. No, you didn't. No, no they both said no. Yeah, I would rather have, yeah, I knew all, you know, I knew, knew about a lot of things. I can't discuss it with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I do, and I will say that Rick is bound by, he, he signed the, um, no, no, I understand. But he didn't, he didn't say I can't tell you. He said, no, we didn't have it. No, no, I know that. that. I know that. That was my uh, issue. I know that. And, and I, you know, I did point that out in that meeting that, that you know, Gerald's sitting there and, and, and has not signed it and Rick has. So, and I'm not saying that's why right. I'm not, I'm not, right. I'm not defending. No, and we didn't get to, he yeah. never, I don't, he never said, Rick never said to us, I, you know, I wish I could tell you, but I can't. We, we, we were never in that position. I'm, and I'm glad. But I mean, I'm I'm assuming that's why we didn't get the documents that I requested. He didn't he didn't officially tell me that he couldn't. Yeah, he 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 spoke with the attorneys and they said it no. Okay, but I mean, we didn't. Right. He didn't he, send me a. Oh, I. A, okay. but, but that's but it's. I assumed. Right. right. Um, but and, I mean, they said to, they they said you could, but not now. <laughs> yeah, once everybody signed it. Well, that's once it's too late. You know. And <laughs> yeah, that's what he said on the knows. in the. That's what he's. Yeah. It, that's that's what he said. That's what they told him. Yeah. No. So, I, I. I. That's. No. Were there. And this he said is the same thing. That's no. No. Right. And I understand that. I understand that. That's why. You know. Why? If I was in his position and I had a lawyer tell me that no, you're not to do that, then I would not do that. That's right. right. Legal counsel is doing? legal counsel, and right. either you know you find somebody who does you, you, you do what they tell you to do, or you get yourself in trouble. It doesn't do any good to have it if you don't do it. Exactly. And for exactly. So, um, well, uh, I withdraw my motion and because we're not going to, we can't negotiate this deal as much as the three of us might like to. So the, I, and we can, and we could probably talk till midnight. Right. So anything further? I'm open, but I mean, I think no. we're All right, seriously, I mean, I don't need a motion, but I do want to clock. We all, we're all saying different things and I don't care if I want to, you know, I'm not pointing fingers, but if I talk to Gerald, if I talk about Rick, you, me, we all, we all know the end result and we all really want the same thing. We all want guaranteed health care for our community. At the end of the day, we do have disagreements of the negotiation power of the contract. So how do we, because I was, I did go to that meeting and I was very, I was very discouraged by that meeting because there was things that transpired within 24 hours of that meeting with no conversation. So I, if I can answer to that, because I, Mike did say that to me yesterday when uh, um, I spoke with him, uh, you know, commenting on that meeting and upon legal counsel, they all were told exactly what to do because they've all lawyered up and shut up yet, yeah, you know, to, and so what you saw there is not that working board, that board that sits there and works on providing health care for- So legal counsel met with every single member of the board that was there and told them not to say anything? They, or sent them an email. Yep. Because they've been sued. And once you're sued, you don't say anything unless legal Our counsel- wasn't even discussed. Wasn't even mentioned. That's what I was going. That was They're probably. not saying anything about anything. 
There, the, the, oh, so yeah. you went to a meeting. I, I didn't go because I knew that nothing was going to happen. Uh, so they they now have had to retain legal counsel, and legal counsel said you can't. Nope. And so that's where they are. They're not. They're not. They're not able to do anything. So, so Gerald has 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 you know accomplished what he set out to do, and so now now the hospital is has employees that are extremely anxious and trying to take care of people. And the, the hospital time. created a lot of this. Whatever. I'm I'm just telling you well, that no, I, I didn't. I you know. I, but I'm, I'm just telling you. Oh, the, the perfect example is the letter that, that the Sebec folks brought up. But, but they didn't need to approach it that way. So, if they, like I said, if, if people want to start pointing fingers, there's all kinds of people making mistakes. Yeah. Well, that, and, and, that's, and so, just because yeah. people have angst and stress, it's really not fair to, to blame the people who are looking for a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. uh, I had a conversation with a, one of the drivers at, at Mayo two weeks ago. And I asked him, I said, hey, what, what do you think about this merger? What are you talking about? I go, the merger between Mayo and East Germany. He goes, there ain't no merger. I go, huh? <laughs> goes, there is no merger. He says, we just had another meeting about this the other day. He says, they're not merging. Go, what are you talking about? I said, yes, they're merging. No, they're not. Mayo is just going to be an affiliate of Eastern Maine. We're going to well, combine synergies and we're going to work together and we're going to right, make this. Right. I go, no. He goes, yeah. He says, that's what we've all been told. I said, no. When you're all said and done, there won't be a man. There won't be a head four. We're going to be. Right. Northern just, Lights, Mayo, right. Northern Lights, or whatever, whatever they want to he call goes, it. That so. is not what we're doing. Well, then the, the obviously administration needs to do a better job in, 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 in explaining what is going to happen. So, well, and I, so that's another example. I don't know, and I wasn't there, so I don't know what was said. I mean, it's just an example, but, and I think that's what needs to happen at that level and at our level. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they were here, I was completely torn. And they were, the story changed within the conversations. I mean, I just don't th think. I don't think they have a really good presentation to let people know what's truly going on. And that I think is a valid that I think is I think they that's valid. I think that's valid. So, and I think that is probably the cause of some of the angst that okay. people are feeling okay. today. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, that is my personal. I'm not saying that is from me personally, and that's why I feel like I can sit here in this seat because this is me personally and my own opinion I'm just saying that that's you know I, I'm not hearing oh you know everybody's anxious that's that's me personally and you know, obviously you know Rick fielding a lot of phone calls of, of angst from, from employees so those are the facts right where the blame lies. How we got here is the question. Okay. I don't, I don't really care about. Fine. I don't yeah. really I, care about blame, honestly. Right, exactly. Fix it. Right, exactly. And I, mean, I, I want to be able to sit here and be educated. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Uh, no question. Because I, I, I'm getting just. I'm not saying I'm getting as many phone calls, but I have quite a few people that are asking me questions, mm -hmm. and I'm telling them I can only answer what has been said to us. Right. And but again, the th yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll go around. And I stand around. Around. What? <laughs> I steer them over the rails. Like, yeah. Well, that's good. Um, and I, you know, I just, I, I don't think that we, I personally, have all the facts. And the, I'm, I can't make a, any decision based on that. So, I'll move to adjourn this meeting. Second.